So I found an interesting bit of trivia. So uh, welcome everybody to the show. For those of you that don't know, welcome to uh, COL 753. Jeff's birthday uh, happy hour. It's the Dirty Dozen edition. Um, mm -hmm. I was intrigued by something. So I went onto the website. Technically, well, okay. So the birthday stuff started in 2014. But the power hours started in 2012. Because apparently y'all did a power hour just for the fun of it. <laughs> and then later came the birthday celebration. So this, the story behind that is uh, one of the podcasts I watch, uh, I think it was the NSFW show at the time. It's changed name like three or four times. Um, they had Ali Spagnola on, mm -hmm. and who did the Power Hour album, which is an album of sixty one minute long songs. That sounds like Ali. All about drinking. So they did a power hour and i was like this is hilarious this is fun let's do it and uh my co-host at the time agreed i'm not going to say reluctantly but they agreed and we did a power hour and i'm like hey when, let's do that again on my birthday when my birthday was coming around and here we are but then we got older and um, one after show when my mother called, I oh <laughs> attempted my to get up and I fell down my bum. So wow. yeah, Jeff, Jeff uh, swiftly left from his rolling office chair and then went to the floor. But what he did not know was that his co-hosts were greatly concerned for his condition and attempted repeatedly to get a hold of him with multiple phone calls and i don't even know if it was messages or texts or what and he was just ignoring us because he was laying on the floor on a phone no, call I, I, I was <laughs> sitting on the floor on my phone call with my parents i even did this like i lifted my hand trying to get my hand into the camera with the thumbs up like i'm okay but i was like here i am Hi, mom. <laughs> just started talking to her. Yeah. So, consequently, uh, two out of the three co hosts um, have had certain kind of experiences with Power Hour. So, we've shifted more to just a happy hour kind of environment. So, people mm -hmm. can imbibe what they like, be social. Uh, although it is funny to go back through the website and look at previous things. And one of the comments on Jeff's very first uh, birthday bash for back in 2014 is the comment says, ding dong. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Which if you've seen the power hours, you understand the, the sound effect of a doorbell was the indication at the top of every minute that it was now time to take another shot. So that was, that was a whole thing. At that time, do I still have that somewhere? I must have that somewhere. Maybe. I'm I'm I am beside myself because apparently all the way back in 2012. So okay, if that was this had to be was that before I joined? I can't remember now. That's so sad. Um one moment, please. I gotta figure this out. Anyways, I commented back in 2012 on the post for the original Power Hour and said, a question to consider is, would you rather take 60 shots of alcohol in an hour or 60 shots from hot men in an hour? That's a fair question. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm saying goodbye to alcohol right now. <laughs> Good deal. Payson's like, nope, that's that's not a thing. All right, so 
Okay, if that was then, hang on. I'm doing some complicated. Interesting. So I joined in January of 2013, and that comment was made by me in August of 2012. So that is from my pre guests and then turning into host days. I didn't realize I had done that. Isn't technology marvelous? All right. So with that said, uh, Jeff, are you ready for the topics of discussion for your birthday show? Oh, I'm always ready for you, Gary. Yeah, that'll turn into a clip that won't be weird later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you hear of a dozen, what is a what is the thing that comes to mind pretty quickly, if not immediately? Eggs, donuts. Good. You got two out of the three. The third one you probably won't think of, but that's okay. <laughs> so uh did you know, cowboys? Uh huh. Thirty <laughs> dozen. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were talking about a fantasy you had. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> are you aware that if one was to compile a list, you could potentially come up with 12 different types, in other words, a dozen different types of donuts? And there's well more than that. Is there, though? So that's kind of the discussion point. Because then I said types, not flavors. Mm. Right. You're talking like like a, 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 a glazed uh, 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 cake donut, mm -hmm. um, old fashioned blueberry. Fast flavors. Yeah. Nope. Question Would something like you know, donut holes and soup guignot be considered separate types because there are slight differences? But soup guignot is kind of a type of donut hole. I can't answer that basically because I don't know what the word is that you're saying or how to spell it for that matter. Uh, soup guignot is a uh, Jewish donut that's based upon the Eastern European donuts, were very common in Poland. Uh, around like this okay. 18th century. Hang on. I think I have this on a list somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. God bless the internet. It like um, websites who make lists of things because there was a Jewish donut listed and I didn't copy paste the name probably because I had no idea how to pronounce it. So I felt like that was going to be a problem. Let me see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, not on this list. It's on the other website. There it is. S U F G A N I Y O T. That's it. Was listed on this website as a Hanukkah jelly filled donut that is made with soft dough stuffed with strawberry jelly and topped with powdered sugar. Mm. So, strawberry jelly is actually less of a traditional flavor. Um, Traditionally, because it's Eastern Europe, you're going to get fewer strawberries and more things like apricot. Um, but yes, that is that is sucrose milk. Okay. Because of its description, I would probably have put it in the jelly-filled type. Um, here in the U.S., we have common uh, flavors of raspberry and strawberry for jelly-filled. Depending on your locale, you may also have pachki. I think it's how it's pronounced, which is the Polish. Uh, stuff the donut. So if you have a large um, Polish population in your area, you may be familiar with them as well. So Jeff, you were saying old fashioned. What do you, what is, what do you consider old fashioned? Well, the old fashioned is the, the ones which are like, you know, how do I say it? It's like wrinkly. <laughs> like a ball sack? I don't like, understand what you're yeah. describing. <laughs> They're like they, they've got like uh, 
like frilled. Are you talking about crawlers? I have no idea what crawlers are. Okay. Let me see if I can. Oh, wrong list. <laughs> I love how I have two websites listing all of these. Crawlers? C R U L L E R S. The distinctive twisted shape of a donut. It's still round. No. Okay. It's a old fashioned donut. Now you're going to make me look up old fashioned donuts on the web. That's what I'm doing right now, too. They have those like twisted donuts, but they're not round, but they're they kind of twisted on both okay. ends. So I think, Jeff, oh, yeah. what you might be describing is like yeah. a, a fried cake donut. In some areas, they're sour cream donuts. Please no, I am I am thinking of the old fashioned, but I'm, I'm but the pictures I'm seeing is uh, for old fashioned is not the same. Not exactly what I'm looking at or thinking of. Okay, but yeah. That is partly what I'm thinking of. So to Payson's earlier question, I don't think holes would necessarily be the same. Um, Cause I think, well, at least here in the U S most people think of donut holes as just like the punch out of the dough in the center. So it's like, it's like the chicken nugget of the pastry world. <laughs> it's a lay. If, if you could believe More like the filet or the yeah the filet mm -hmm. Payson I as a Canadian you are just being like you're just destroying my culture right now uh, I feel very attacked <laughs> uh, it's like just the punch out like no no like this is our culture but you, when you when we make make a traditional donut, it's it's just a round piece of dough with a hole cut into it. And you take that what you cut out of that that round piece of dough, that hole is what's put into the fryer as the donut hole. I mean, in Canada, you know, you just make donut holes because you're gonna sell so many more donut holes than you will donuts. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. So people or that's go called in, lazy donut making. People go into donut stores and buy like twenty packs of donut holes, uh, and not a donut. It's it's <laughs> it's the remnants of. <laughs> so what I'm hearing, Payson, is in Canada, people prefer holes over the donuts themselves. I mean. I know I do. Don't you like you a okay, frosted Lloyd? hole? Uh-oh. Okay. Well, you know. <laughs> um, so I guess my question is, uh, Jeff, since it's your birthday, what are your opinions on donuts? Do you have any favorites? Like in terms of like flavors or types? I mean, it really is more of my mood. Um, okay. I as a kid, I absolutely adored the maple long john. Ah, okay. So long john's one of the dozen, mm -hmm. and those were like maple glazed. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of my favorites. Um, otherwise, just this the standard glazed donut. Get please. Is really great when in Austin, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's hard to beat a Krispy Kreme, man, unfortunately. So, yeah. Oh my, my ex would like drive to get to the Krispy Kreme in Canada, uh, <laughs> because yeah, the nearest Krispy Kreme to Ottawa is in Montreal, and with traffic, it's a three-hour drive, and he would make it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me so, driving two hours for Chipotle like 12 years yeah. ago. 
<laughs> because there were none in my area and I had to travel that far to get to one. <laughs> to me, that would be one of those I really have a craving for those. Right. No, that makes sense. Uh, you have any thoughts or feelings about cream filled? Oh, yeah. I like cream filled though. Like Boston cream, Bavarian cream, mm -hmm. French cream. Yeah. Yes. Bombolini. Yes. Uh, I don't, though I like jelly filled too. Right. Especially if it's a cherry or raspberry. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mentioned earlier about the the Long Johns. Is that something that you grew up with as a kid? I don't know if everybody knows about them. Yeah, I know about those. You can you can get chocolate, you can get vanilla, caramel toppings on those. Yeah, they're well, they're they're shaped just instead of like the regular circular donut shape. They're just a long stick of donut dough. Right. It's like it's like a it's like a donut bar as opposed to a round or oblong kind of shape. Maybe closer to an eclair, but not but just made with donut dough and fried. Right. I think people can conflate the two in in America because we're heathens and swine and we don't have culinary taste. So <laughs> we're just like it's all the same thing. It's a it's a cream filled thing. And it's like, well, no, actually an eclair is a very different thing, but anyways. <laughs> You know. Yeah. Now, Jeff, have you ever had any deep fried donuts? Most donuts are deep fried. Well, so that's fair. They could either be baked or fried. But in this case, I was thinking of the category in which like beignets, um, which are very popular in New Orleans, uh, ricotta or zeppoli. Um, which are all kind of the same style or category. They're not quite round. Um, they can be, but they're a little bit more square, sometimes mm -hmm. filled, but normally it is just a uh, deep fried dough and then just absolutely obliterated in powdered sugar. See, I'm not a fan of powdered sugar donuts. Okay. Like, I'll eat them, they're yummy, but... They also are messy. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is you have to be in the mood. No, if the um, <clears throat> cinnamon powdered sugar uh, toppings, I like it actually better than just the the direct powdered sugar. We have a new person looking to enter. Let's see who this is. I'm intrigued. Unless they decide not to join. Well, uh, if you can get to Ottawa, Jeff, I have a birthday cake for you. Aww. Well, he's a heck of a lot cl Wait, is he closer? <laughs> I have to stop and think about this. Actually, I think you're probably closer. Well, no, I was about to say you're a lot closer than you used to be. Well, yeah, I'm much closer than I was. I'm not, not as close as when I was in my home state. In my home state, I was essentially in southern Canada. Okay, yes. I mean, technically, I am closer to Ottawa than Jeff is, but... Your your move to Cincinnati has significantly gotten closer to Canada. Correct. I mean, it's it's theoretically drivable. I mean, it just depends on how much you want to drive. Well, heck, you just drove halfway across the country, so let's see how what we're in like a quarter or a third. Uh, it would be about twelve hours. From Cincinnati to, to Ottawa. Yeah, that's shorter than from Austin to Cincy. Which I think this is weather for that cake. 
I think it, the, I think there needs to be some extra glaze on that. I was just gonna say, but is that the only <laughs> cake that would be served? I mean, I would answer that question, but you said this is going on YouTube, so I cannot. <laughs> Look, there's showing and there's telling. <laughs> well, showing, right. you cannot. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> we can just imagine. Just let let our imagination just just run. I don't. I don't cake and towel. Uh... <laughs> but the internet may say otherwise in deep dark corners. Apparently, a mode did I'm amazing. Mean... I I don't think you'll find anything of me on the internet. I am. I that's not the type of girl I am. <laughs> okay. Very good. If you say so. <laughs> I know. I'm like telegrams is different, but anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, have you ever heard of or had fritters? Yes, apple fritters. Love them. <laughs> so, uh, for those that don't know. Uh, fritters can come in savory or in sweet varieties. Um, and so, sure. yeah, like apple fritters is like the most common version. Um, there can be others. They're probably not as popular or <laughs> going to be as well known in that case. Um, but and they don't exactly look the best. Like they're probably not gonna win a contest in photography. Like when it comes to fritters or donuts in general, it's not about the look; it's about the taste. Just because sure. they look awful, they probably taste delicious. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah, fritters tend to be a lot uh, more lumpy and craggly, um, which because they're fried gives them all sorts of like texture differences so in fact now that it's becoming the fall uh season for us in the u.s you're going to be in a region jeff where you get to have like uh seasonal variety food items that actually kind of go with the uh, with the temperature outside that's true i um, well here the thing there's been a change so I've been essentially lived in three general areas of my life, mm -hmm. Minnesota, Texas, Austin specifically, and now Ohio. Mm -hmm. In Minnesota, we had two seasons. We had winter and road construction. In Austin, we had two seasons, summer and road construction. In Cincinnati, we have like multiple seasons in a day. Well, I mean, that kind of sounds like where I live. Our running joke is if you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes, it'll change. But that being said, um, yeah. So yeah, fr fritters are, can be quite popular in that area. Um, and then of course there's, and in some ways these are kind of classic, they're twists. Mm -hmm. So you basically take your uh, yeast leaven dough and uh, twist it around. Usually, I want to say it's like, now I'm looking for a picture of one on one of these websites I was on. Um, I want to say it's like a, it's just a figure eight. Let me see. Yep. Yep. Found it. Yeah. Or, well, depending. What I'm looking at is a, a twisted Korean donut. Oh, interesting. Also known as tiger tail donuts. Tiger tail donuts? The Korean ones that I'm looking at. Tiger tail donut. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce and the it's Korean. It's a twist. Literally. Mm hmm. Gentlemen, I'm going to be listening, and I got to make a drug run. They just text me. That's fair. But, but I will be on my cell, so I'll be listening. Okay. 
And just so everybody knows, I'm assuming that means he's going to a pharmacy. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> not, 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 a, not a drug dealer. Exactly. Although Thank technically you. a Thank pharmacy you, is a drug dealer, but legal. Yeah. Anyways, I, I did find it, by the way. <laughs> yeah. No, that's totally fair. I'll be back in I kind of thought about that as well, Jeff. I was like, um, a clarification. From my garage band project of the doorbells. Okay. Uh, so let's see, we've talked about glazed, cream filled, old fashioned holes, jelly filled crullers, fritters, long johns, twists, and deep fried. So, is anyone familiar with brioche donuts? Wait says yes. They're just made with a brioche dough, right? Basically, yeah. Let me... Super fluffy, pillowy dough that is fried to golden perfection with that characteristic white line with the set through the center. Yeah, so these, on this particular website, they're described as a f made from a French brioche dough. It's yeast, butter, eggs, milk, sugar. Um, very flavorful, signature, soft and fluffy. But the picture that I'm looking at, these are fully round, kind of like a filled donut. Um, so there's a part of me that's a little intrigued. I'm wondering, I don't know if I've ever had one or not. They're fairly popular over here in the U the US. In the US, no, the Europe. You where can't. where are you at, Lloyd? <laughs> where am where I am? Listen, I've been traveling. Don't come at me. Don't come at me. I've been traveling. Yeah, they're they're in the UK over here. You get a lot of brioche style donuts, especially from like local like artisans or whatever it's supposed to be called. So you're an uck, we're an us. Nice. All right, so. Let's talk about eggs, if you don't mind. Now, okay, wait, what about eggs? Well, there's at one, least two or three episodes about eggs in Good Eats. Right. Well, one, they come in a dozen. So that's kind of a natural thing, just like donuts. But two, I was able to come up with 12 different styles of eggs styles as in like preparation slash how they're like how you eat them i guess eat them that's not the right way like how they're made i guess is the better way to phrase that fried mm -hmm. scrambled mm -hmm. omelets mm -hmm. quiche mm -hmm. poached yes Hard boiled, soft boiled. Yes, that's all one. Boiled. Boiled. Oh. Uh oh. Lloyd's Lo really got opinions all of a sudden. There is definitely a difference between a soft boiled and a hard boiled egg. Uh, cloud. Cloud. Do I have cloud? The cloud. I do not, but that's fine. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I can only of your list. I can only think of seven. I can think uh, of eight, but not seven, but only seven. Otherwise, one of them is very popular for brunch and comes with a sauce. Oh, um, egg Benedict. Mm -hmm. I don't like hollandaise. That's fine. That's probably why I forgot. Uh, another one is prepared and baked in a pan. I guess that's probably the best way to phrase that. It is usually shared. That sounds like a quiche. Uh, not exactly. Unless you mean like egg bake. No, but I, is it evil? Is it evil? I don't know what it's. What is that question supposed to be? Oh, for deviled eggs. 
Oh, well. Oh, yeah. Double eggs. I would have. One of my favorite per preparations for eggs, too. I probably would have put deviled eggs in with boiled because that's like part of the preparation method. Uh, I'm now going to look up this word and see because I think it's Italian. Italian egg dish. Well, I think the word is Italian. Yes. Originating in Italy, simple homemade dish has become well known and loved both in the US and in Europe. It's a popular brunch dish. Frittata? Very good. Oh. All right. Now I have a question for you, Jeff. This might be controversial. When you said fried, mm -hmm. were you think of thinking of a certain kind of egg that's fried or different? Well, I, I, I thought like saying side up, right? Uh, 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 egg over easy. Mm -hmm. That type of fried. Those are both, that would also be considered like the same category, whether it's okay. side side up or over easy, medium, light. Although I love a gooey yolk. Okay. Those people who don't like the yolk, they're missing out the actual flavor of an egg. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. All right. What White are your thoughts? Really, just for texture. <laughs> That's fair. What are your thoughts on egg bites? Have you ever had them? Have you seen them? No, oh, like, like, I can get like egg bites from like Jimmy Dean egg bites or something like that from <clears throat> from the grocery store. I've had those. I like those. Okay. Those are mm -hmm. kind of, I think, I feel like a newer item for those that don't know. It's basically, it's like, like you prepare scrambled egg or omelet mix, but then you put it usually like in a tin, like you would make muffins or cupcakes in. And so they're like pre-portioned, ready to go. Um, it's funny because I got an Instapot a few years ago and I found out like that was a thing that you could do. And you go on the, you know, the great shopping God website, you know which one. And you can get silicone like holders that like make them and this and that. But the only thing about egg bites is they're like quiche in that they deflate really fast. So like they may puff up at everything, but then they. This is this is why I get the frozen ones. Ah. And I just pop in the microwave. Gotcha. That's very fair. And then I heard of well, so. Egg bites are a little different than, I guess, um, which I didn't know this was a term, shirred, S-H-I-R-R-E-D. Oh, I've heard of this. I can't think of what it is. And then it also says baked. So they're they're baked in a ramekin, it says sometimes with buttercream or other sauce, until the whites have set, but the yolk is still liquid. And then they're served with so bread or like, toast that can be dipped. Instead of frying them, you... You bake them. Right. And if I recall, yeah, if I recall correctly, like this is not in a water bath. When they're put in a water bath, they're called coddled eggs. So the eggs are set within a cream filled ram can. Yeah, and they're in a hot water bath and steamed that way. So it's kind of the same thing, but not quite. And then, last but not least, is cloud eggs. Yeah, I said that. Okay. And I've never had them, but I'm very, I'm always intrigued when I see them, like, on social media. I think they're overrated. I that's more about the looks because I believe it's whipping the egg whites mm -hmm. and then like putting the yolk on top of it or something like that. 
Right. So basically, you whip the egg whites and then you put them uh, on a like pan or a silk pad, like parchment paper, something of that sort, wax paper, to bake in the oven. And you make an indentation and you put the yolk in the indentation. So it looks like an egg when it comes out of the oven. And the egg whites have now baked slash cooked. And the yolk has cooked, but it is runny. So it's a whole different kind of dining experience in that case. Yeah, it's basically a meringue that's topped with the yolk. Correct, a savory meringue. So you wouldn't be adding sugar to it. You would just add like a little right. salt and some cream of tartar. Are you learning new things, Lloyd? I don't know if learning's the word I'd use, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Totally fair. Nice. All right. You know, and it's funny because I was preparing this and I was trying to come up with things that come in dozens. And it's really funny to see how many internet searches have tried to create lists of things that come in dozens. And that doesn't really happen a lot. <laughs> Although it does make me laugh how many lists had pencils listed. And I haven't had to buy a pack of pencils like in it like more than half my age. So now I'm intrigued if I ever see them at a store, I'm going to pay attention and see if they actually come in a dozen or if they come in like 10. Because I'm like, that's not a thing that I was aware of necessarily. But in principle, there could be considered for this other category, 12 main uh, flavorings. And this is, this is highly debatable because we live in such a global society of right soda fountain drink like flavors or profiles soda fountain drink so basically flavored sodas right or in some areas of the u.s specifically we'd call it pop in other places we'd call it soda i grew up in a pop area as did i but moved to a soda area I've never lived in a Coke area. Mm, that's fair. I'm curious, Lloyd, what do they, how do they refer to soda fountain drinks in, in the UK? Like Coke fizzy drinks. drinks. We just call it fizzy drinks. Fizzy drinks? Fizzy 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 drinks. Beverages. It's not like soda or pop or anything, it's just fizzy drink. So how do you, or, or do you have uh Fizzy spring water. Yeah, um, soda water. Okay. And I'm trying to think, like here, we have a lot of flavored seltzer or mm -hmm. flavored soda water. Or <clears throat> we have sparkling waters like LaCroix. Yeah. We have sparkling water, but sparkling water and soda water are different <laughs> things. Okay. Somehow. I haven't worked out what the logic of that is yet, but it is different things. Well, okay, so so you're saying there's twelve main set of flavors. Well, this is where it's going to get real dicey. So, like, or sodas. Uh, yeah, kind of flavors. Well, they're all yeah, they're flavors. Like, I was trying to compile this list. And there's there is a massive, huge list, but I will say a good number of these. I'm like, these are probably popular in other parts of the world not here in the u.s <laughs> all right so we got cola correct we have root beer correct so for soda. yes so the for the root beer i was combining root beer sarsaparilla spruce beer and birch beer in essence they are all kind of similar in that they are using roots herbs to create the flavor profile Cream soda? Yes. It's a separate one from root beer, right? Yes. So commonly, commonly for for companies that make root beer, they have a cream soda. So they're usually kind of lumped together by the company that makes them. Right. But cream soda is typically 
in my opinion, and I could be wrong about this because I don't care for this, which is an odd thing to say, it's vanilla. It's right. some derivation of a vanilla soda. Um, and I've never really tried to dissect it, but it's not a thing I'm really a fan of. I just kind of don't drink it. Uh, there's cherry cola, which is cherry, I suppose. Well, so cola and cherry cola, I felt were kind of together because it's a yeah. flavor of cola. Okay. So then we have orange soda, grape soda. Cola, root beer. Cream. What else have I said? Uh, cream, root beer, cola. cherry, cola. You just said grape. Grape. <clears throat> you said orange, which I grouped as a whole category with some others. Fruit. What? Or citrus. There you go. Okay. So, so lemon, a, thyme, grapefruit, lemon, lime, or lemon lime. Well, the lemon lime soda is like, like talking about like, like Sprite or Seven Up. That's uh, a category that's separate from from like orange and grape. I mean, I, I hear you on that. That's where I was like, well, these are technically all citrus. Um, so I was trying to like figure out because that's why I said because like, like, like a Mountain Dew is also different, very different from like a Sprite or Seven Up. So lumping them together seems kind of uh, robot. well, they're all citrus, but right. I think citrus goes really well with sodas mm -hmm. as a soda. So that's why I would definitely consider that separate from like grape soda and orange right. soda. Um, those those are much more stronger artificial flavoring to their type. I, I wouldn't even consider grape and orange separate from something like a 7-Up or Sprite. Or what are they calling the serum mist nowadays? Starry or something like that? Yeah, now it's called, I think it's called Starry. Which is the stupidest name change ever. No, and, yeah. and, and that's the, that's, that's the Coke one, right? Hang on, I'm going to pull it up. Uh, yeah, it's Starry, S-T-A-R-R-Y, a crisp, refreshing lemon lime soda. Um, it's Pepsi. Uh, the Pop Tarts. Pop Tarts. What? Or the yeah, not Pop Tarts. Um, Tweet Tarts. Like the energy drinks. Oh, it all tastes like Sweet Tarts. Interesting. I hadn't quite considered energy drinks. But I hear you. You do be fair. Some of them have their own. Like, you end up having like the coffee one, the vanilla one. True. Because uh, if you hand me a monster loca mocha, I'd be one of the happiest boys in all the world. I don't know how I feel about carbonated coffee. Well, it's not carbonated. Oh. No. It's an energy drink. It's more like in canned iced coffee. Well, but see, isn't that interesting? Because energy drinks here in the U.S., at least, do come both carbonated and non-carbonated. Right. Like the um, uh, Monster Rehabs are usually some sort of iced tea flavoring right which are delicious they I are think. they probably have all sorts of horrible chemicals in them because they're they taste very good i don't care i know my 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 personal when i would be out and i would drive 
and have a lot of driving to do, I would get a, a half and half monster rehab. So it's like an Arnold Palmer flavor. So it's like tea, but also like lemonade. Oh, yeah. Um, I like that one, too. What, what is that? Monster rehab. what's the yeah it's a tea and lemonade yeah it it doesn't even have like a special name i know it's just i love love that one that's one of my favorites are there are there soda companies and or flavors that would be known in the uk we wouldn't necessarily know here besides like the big ones you know pepsi coke kind of stuff who makes I am um Fentimans is about your place as well, isn't it? What? Yeah, Fentiman soda. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Uh it's botanically brewed soda. It's like, oh, we're like we're, we taste more natural or some nonsense like that. I think that's over here. Who makes <laughs> iron brew? <laughs> and when you take about talking about naturally fermented, you're not this is not to be confused with kombucha. No, it's not. It's not kombucha. It's Fentiman's. Fentiman drinks are like cloudy lemonade and dandelion and burdock and things like that. But definitely not kombucha. But we do have a specific drink in Scotland called Iron Brew, which is, I guess, it is Scotland's national drink, and it's made somewhere in England in Glasgow, I think. And it, I, I think the company is just called Iron Brew, and it's like the one thing, the one soda that's the national over drink here. of that's Scotland so is English. Pardon me. The natural drink of Scotland would be English. It's not. I don't think it's English. Okay, so in, I don't so, think it's English. Okay. Is Glasgow in Scotland or is that in England? Glasgow is in Scotland. Yes. Oh, it is in Scotland. Never mind. So, Iron Brew. Just for mm-hmm. folks to know, because I've I've heard of it before and I've never looked it up. Is I R N dash B R U. Yep, that's the one. <clears throat> Scottish carbonated soft drink, often described as Scotland's other national drink, and it says parentheses after Scotch whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Introduced in 1901, the drink is produced in Westfield, Cumbernauld, North Lancashire, by A G Bar of Glasgow. As well as being sold throughout the United Kingdom, Iron Brew is available throughout the world and can usually be bought where there is a significant community of people from Scotland. The brand also has its own tartan. It has been a top-selling soft drink in Scotland for over a century, competing directly with global brands such as Coca-Cola. Wait, are are brands allowed to have their own tartan? Uh, Iron Brew is. <laughs> Apparently, don't, I mean, don't tell them otherwise. Right, I was gonna say I mean, Iron, that, Iron. that's that's fair. I was just like, is that national faux pas or something? Or Scotland? No, but they, they listen. If Scotland wants their own drink to have a freaking tartan, I'm not gonna tell them no. You're like, I'm not Scottish. So I'm, not, I'm gonna keep be, like they're the ones that decided, it, not me. <laughs> Hands off. I mean. To be fair, any family can have a tartan if they wanted to. You can create one. The Scottish Register of Tartans officially lists the Iron Brew Tartan. Uh, it was designed in 1969 as the bar <laughs> tartan nice. designed by How Design. In 1996 and 1997, it was redesigned by Kinlock Anderson, and the name was changed to Iron Brew. It was registered with the Scottish Tartan Society on the 12th of September, 1997. The colors are based on the brand label and a limited range of products are available online. Interesting. The strong orange and blue colors are the brand identity of Iron Brew. A woven sample of this tartan has been received by the Scottish Register of Tartans for the permanent preservation of the National Records of Scotland. That checks out. Nice. (laughs) 
Yeah, I believe there's also an official uh, bear tartan registered with the uh, Scottish National Tartan Registry. Is a bear tartan? Oh, there man. is. I've seen it before. Hang on, let me look for it. Yep, oh, there is. found it. Uh, let me put talking. this into the chat. Yes, chat, chat. Where's the? Ch There's a chat. I'm on a different platform. I don't know what I'm looking at. This tartan uh, was designed by Christopher Horn, and its date is January seventh of two thousand five. It takes the eight colors from basically the Bear Pride flag and creates it into a tartan. And to be honest, it's not a bad looking pattern. It's Lloyd. Really good. I would love to have listen. That. I've been accused for decades of my life of being like genetically part cupy doll because of how hard my eyes roll back in my head. So <laughs> game recognizes game. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're you're considered a cupy doll? I was that was a running joke that like I like for my young adult life, my eyes constantly would roll and people would be like, Could you try to not do that? To be obvious, I didn't. I was like, Does that mean when you come that we can call it Cupy Mayo? Oh my God, you did not, <laughs> did not just. Lloyd, do you have anything you want to say, or are you just gonna like? I am. I am staying out of this one. You're on your own. <laughs> I was referring to the tartan. Thank you. I have none to say if the bears want to have their own tartan. Just like, they, they, just like they think they deserve their own flag, they are more than welcome to it. Who am I to say otherwise? Listen, listen. It's not listen, like Linda. you guys try to say it yourselves within your own community. As here's it, a, here's the thing. This is from almost 20 years ago. So, like, it was a different time. Look, I would love to have the kilt made with that tartan. Right. I think I honestly. Heck, I, would, I would just like a shirt with that pattern. Like a flannel? Can I get it like a full outfit? You want a suit? I, you can also get a great kilt. Because the great kilt is a big, is the traditional kilt. And it goes like, it's the one that goes over your chest and then has the kilt. So it's basically like a giant blanket. And you kind of roll yourself in it to uh, outfit it. So a traditional kilt is a full outfit. Ooh. So if anybody wants to get me something for their for my birthday <laughs> or for Christmas. And they just want to drop, you, you know, a good chunk of change. <laughs> All right, let me put this. I'm gonna put this over in the doc so I have that link to the bear tartan in case anybody happens to be interested. Lloyd won't be, but you know. <laughs> Um, so I looked up Fentimans. Uh, I'm very intrigued. So this label looks a little familiar, but I'm going to say it's because to me, it kind of looks like other like soda labels. I think I've seen, but I hear I'm you going like history right now to see if I can't find where it was from the, but it looks like it was, it looks like it was England. It was England started. So I'm going to call it an English brand and hope I'm right. <laughs> and uh, they do soda. So there we go. Let me see. Do they have a Wikipedia this. page? They do. Hey. I'm, I'm almost done with my sangria bottle. Okay. Well, we, we might be wrapping up soon. <laughs> 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 Thomas Fentiman, an iron puddler from Cleckheaton, West Yorkshire, acquired a recipe for botanically brewed ginger beer in 1905 when a fellow tradesman approached Fentiman for a loan. The loan was never paid, so Thomas became the owner of the recipe. The firm became a door-to-door -door ginger beer sales company using a horse-drawn vehicle for transport. His ginger beer was stored in handmade stone jars known as gray hens, all stamped with Fentiman's mascot based on Thomas's German shepherd dog named Fearless, who won the Crufts obedience class twice in 1933 and in 1934. 
The botanically brewed ginger beer became popular quickly and business grew with several brewing and production facilities being opened in the north of England. It goes on to explain that the company fell on hard times as supermarkets entered the soft drink market. As a result, the sales of the gray hens, which were the stone jugs, slumped and the company closed in the mid-60s. However, in 1988, Thomas Fentiman's great-grandson re-established the business with a mission to produce drinks the original way with 100% natural ingredients. Interesting. So you're right, Lloyd. It is it is uniquely English and over uh, well almost 120 years old. Nice. We got we got sodas as old as your country. That's how we roll. Yeah. So the botanical brewing is a technique with a combination of infusion, blending, and fermentation of the natural ingredients. The original recipe involved milling ginger roots before putting them in a copper steam jacketed pan and leaving them to simmer so that they release their flavors. And then the ingredients can be herbs, natural flavorings, sugar, spring water, and brewer's yeast was added, thoroughly stirred, and boiled. The liquid is then transferred to a wooden vat to undergo fermentation. Interesting. In 2009, the state of Maine in the U.S. banned the sale of Fentiman's Victorian Lemonade, a different flavor, to anyone aged under 21 after reclassifying it as an imitation liquor. The ban was introduced after a schoolboy in the small town of Holton, Maine, noticed that the lemonade's label stated it contained up to 0.5% alcohol, showed his high school principal. They, in turn, contacted the local police who went to the state's liquor licensing officials in Maine's attorney general office. Fentimans responded to the ban with a statement telling any concerned citizens of Holton and the law enforcement officials to steer clear of the company's other naturally fermented <laughs> mechanical soft drinks. You drunks! <laughs> <laughs> what was the percentage? 0.5%. 0.5%. Wait, 0.5 or 0.05%. 0.5, like a half a percent. <laughs> Although the There's Lemonade drugs. label states the beverage may contain up to 0.5% of alcohol by volume, which is mm. below the soft drinks alcohol limit le legislated for the U.S., Fentiman said it was closer to 0.3%, the same as many common products such as mouthwashes or chewing gums. A person would need to consume 200 fluid ounces. <laughs> So 5.7 liters or 12 U.S. pints to get the intoxication of one beer. They're just drunks there. That's all. It's that's not even enough to get drunk they're, they're, they're lightweights is what they are. I wouldn't call them drunks. Well, that, that means it doesn't take much for them to be drunks. I don't think the point of drinking it was to get drunk. That's the part that's killing me about this is because it said it had some alcohol in it. It caused such a kerfuffle. And I'm like, really? Right. Yeah. Hey, this might have a little bit of alcohol, but nothing that's noticeable or effective. Yeah. You, you would think that that wouldn't cause such a hoopla. Yeah. So, yeah, their, their flavors apparently, um, current products are Curiosity Cola, a Cherry Cola, a Dandelion, and Burdock. Mandarin and a uh, Seville orange jigger, a lemon shandy, a Victorian lemonade, a rose lemonade, traditional ginger beer, sparkling lime and jasmine, gently sparkling elderflower, old English root beer, apple and blackberry combined, a sparkling raspberry, and a pink ginger. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so here's here's an interesting question about uh, life experiences. Have you ever had peach soda, Jeff? No. Really? Never. That was a thing when I was a kid. I thought that um, Vess, I know here in, here in St. Louis, Vess was an old time soda, uh, soda company and they had peach, they had strawberry, they had all those uh flavors fruit punch mm -hmm. but i don't know how far it went i don't know if it was just regionally or it was uh unique to the st louis region it was founded uh in 1916 by sylvester jones 
who arrived at the vest brand name from his nickname. Um, Charles Leiper Grigg, who would later go on to invent 7-Up, invented and marketed his first soft drink called Whistle, which yeah. was an orange soda, which is yes. still sold by Vest today. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, after the 1929 stock market crash left the company in a bad financial state, the business was sold to Donald Schneeberger. Schneeberger was considered a genius at marketing and added several new flavors. At the height of its popularity, it had bottling in uh, North Carolina, Indiana, and Ohio. And in 1994, it was purchased by Cot, that's C-O-T-T -T beverages. In 2017, Refresco purchased Cot and assumed ownership of the Vest label. My goodness. Uh, interesting. And then... In 2021, Vess hired Folsom Distributing Company of St. Louis to distribute its products around the St. Louis region. Its slogan is the Billion Bubble Beverage. Yep. And in the 1980s, they produced a mm. chocolate beverage similar to YooHoo called Vess Chocolate that was discontinued in the mid-90s. A chocolate soda? Mm-hmm. You. <laughs> yeah, that, and that was the cheapest soda around, too. So a lot of, I know when I was growing up, you know, best, best soda would cost you maybe, when I was growing up, 25 cents. And the other name brands would be a little bit more. So we became... Best fans, real quick. Orange, the orange whistle. The, the fruit prunch was the best, I think. I think a lot of people like that. So when I grew up as a kid, the reason I know about peach soda was because of a company called Knee High. Yeah. Um, N E H I, which was introduced um, in 1924 by the Chiro Cola Union Bottle Works. Um, and they began with ginger ale and a root beer. And then... Isn't that, uh, isn't that what Radar drink or something? In Maybe. Nash? Yes. Very good, Jeff. A fictional mm -hmm. illustration of the popularity of the drink of the era, this is later in the article, was seen by the character Corporal Walter Radar O'Reilly, the company clerk on the wrong lending... Ron, uh, long running series smash set during the Korea War because Radar's favorite beverage was grape knee high. Does it mention anything about uh, Shasta in uh, what you're looking up? Uh, I th no, but I'm not, I was going to say it's a, well, actually, it's C also, <laughs> which no oh. one is surprised by. It's another. Uh, beverage company from apparently Northern California founded in 1889 oh. it was the Shasta Mineral Springs Company at that time and then in 1928 it changed to the Shasta Water Company uh, and they produced a mineral water and then in 1931 they produced their first soft drink ginger ale I'm catching a trend here Yes. Um, <laughs> and until the 1950s, the company's products were mainly used as mixers for alcohol drinks. And then in the 50s, they began a new strategy and started introducing soft drinks and can cans, including low calorie soft drinks. And by the 60s, Shasta was well known for its sodas and mixers throughout the West, Western part of the US and parts of the South. As I say, I, I've known of Shasta, but I don't think we sold it in our region, though. Yeah. I remember Shasta. Also, I got up to get this. Uh... Mash? Yeah. Is that a DVD set? Yep. <laughs> I, ha I think I have all 11 seasons. Wow. On DVD. Also, I got up and peed. So I really need to pee. So the reason why I knew about knee high is because when I was a kid, you could get a knee high bottle for a quarter mm -hmm. and they came in, uh, I don't think they came in 
I don't remember if they came in four packs or not. I want to say yes, because then it would have been a buck for four. But my dad worked at a beer distributor. And so in the evenings when he would work there part time, I would be there sometimes with him in the evenings while my mom, uh, who worked third shift, was getting sleep at home. And I remember it was a big deal that I could like pick out the flavors of knee high I wanted. And they came in a whole rainbow of stuff. So you had like cherry, orange, uh, lime, lemon, peach was the rare flavor to find, uh, grape, and watermelon. I'm trying to think. Did they have a root beer? Yeah, they, uh, they had a root beer. I think they want to say they had a ginger ale. But I just remembered that they were very colorful and that they were a lot of fruit flavors that you didn't normally get for soda. Um, that was like the only place I ever knew of that you could get like those kind of flavors. Um, How about like a, a fruit punch? I was just going to say like a, a fruit punch infamously, which is usually the color red, which means nothing because it's just. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> a blend of things. All right, so we've kind of covered all of them except for one, which I know, Jeff, you're probably f maybe aware of, but I don't know if you've ever had tamarind. No, I have not. I'm, uh, I'm aware of tamarind. Didn't realize that there was a tamarind soda. Mm -hmm. uh, let me find it here. It was on the list of... Dun, 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 dun. Doritos, is that how it's pronounced? It's the Mexico soft drink company. Oh, yeah. Or Joritos, maybe. Some of the Mexican restaurants around here have had that available, too. I've never tasted it, but. Oh, yeah, I recognize this. Yeah, so they, uh, let's see were founded in 1950 by Don Francisco El Guero Hill. And it's uh, fruit flavors and cane sugar, vinegar, and is less carbonated than many soft drinks made in Mexico. Um, and the word means little jug in Spanish, which refers to the tradition of storing uh, drinks in clay pottery. And their flavors are, let's see here, fruit punch, grapefruit, guava, uh, yamica, Lemon, lime, just lime, mandarin, sorry, mandarin, mango, manzana. I don't know what that is. I'm not intrigued. Mexican cola, passion fruit, pineapple, strawberry, tamarind, and watermelon. Oh, okay. Manzana is apple. Which I have had. I don't know if you've ever had an apple soda. I have not had an apple soda. Think a slightly watered down apple juice with bubbles. <laughs> I mean, I've had a cider. Mm -hmm. But those are more alcoholic. Yeah. Good deal. Any other sodas you can think of that we didn't mention? Or a particular thing that you have? I mean, there's that entire brand. brand oh, I can't remember the name of the brand. That makes really weird flavorings like bacon soda. Oh, Jones? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, in Canada and spring, we often get maple soda uh, at the sugar bush near me. What I get, that's got to be really sweet. I mean, it, it, it is a very sweet, they generally make it very sweet. You could make it less sweet, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's very sweet. <laughs> like Just diabetes like inducing kind of sweet? <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I, well, my blood sugar levels are good so far, uh, and I usually uh, drink it. So ask me in five years. Uh, <laughs> it's probably your genes you're fighting it off the power lifting also helps oh yeah that's very true yep burn a lot of calories 
Nice. All right. So here's the here's the big question, Jeff. So you got a new toy. Hmm. Thanks to the patrons. We splurged. We got you a new microphone that came with a arm stand attached to your desk. And I think it comes with software, if I recall correctly. Oh, I already had the software because I have other steel series stuff. Uh, okay. <clears throat> um, but I can not figure out how to make it do what I want it to do. So okay. Otherwise, so in many cases, this ends up being just a new mic. <laughs> but it gives me a little sand where instead of having to go into the two apps I'm connected to Skype and, and OBS, I can just mute my mic with the button on, just like that. Just like that. What are you doing? I'm hitting, I'm, I'm tapping the mute button to show that I can mute by a button. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause I thought you were having a stroke or something. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you're not far also, off. Cause I was like, he's doing something. Here. So they can get louder. <laughs> all with my knee. Well, oh, boy. So this gives you better control over that mm -hmm. on your end, correct? Yes. Okay. So other birthday presents I gave myself uh, include a 4K 32-inch monitor and two, 40, two 4K 27-inch, uh, 28-inch monitors. I consider those my birthday and Christmas presents to myself. Mm. So okay. you're going to be surrounded I'm not by money. out of my own money. <laughs> I did that for me. One of my monitors was going out, so I was like, hey, I just got this. I need to replace that monitor. So I got this 32 and I'm, and, and I'm like, well, since I'm getting a new monitor, why don't I upgrade to 4K? So I did. And then after having that, and I was like, hmm, maybe I should just upgrade my other monitors, the one I use for my Mac, with my MacBook and my secondary monitor for my main computer. I don't upgrade those to 4K because I have money to spend. Oh. On another note. Yes. He muted I'm Currently himself. learning Japanese. Oh. By Duolingo. As I say, that seems bold. <laughs> in, in the years oh. I've known you, that wasn't something I could have predicted. <laughs> Well, I did watch a lot of uh, tokusatsu and anime, so. Ah. Uh. Japanese. And, I mean, if I was in uh, Austin, maybe I would have started working more on uh, Spanish. But although we do have a t couple of Portuguese speakers in, in, in the office, so we could have also learned Portuguese, but. The one thing that I really wanted to learn was uh, Japanese. So there's one thing that I forgot to mention on, on the last episode of Comes Out Loud. What's going on was that I started learning Japanese on Duolingo a couple weeks ago. Currently got a 21 day streak. Now for the, the fact that I tried to keep it up by just doing a lesson each day during my vacation. I, those lessons don't take very long, though, right? Yeah, it takes like five minutes, maybe if that. There you go. So do they uh, put sounds and stuff together so you can make completed sentences? Yeah, like uh, one exercise, just like they say, here's here's a new word. Here's what it means. Practice using this in a set. Here's a sentence. Can you select the right things? Tap the mashing pairs. So rice, gohan, 
water, mizu. mizu. Sushi is sushi. sushi. Green tea is ocha. ocha. Please is kudasai. Oh, new word was ramen. Ramen. Kare. 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 For curry. Kore wa ramen desu. Kore wa ramen desu. She this needs to tone good. her voice down. She's shouting at you. <laughs> Don't she know you're the birthday boy? That was that was the the kid avatar. Uh, in. This. This takes me back to high school. <laughs> yep, exactly. Spanish in high school and in college. Ramen Ueshi this. I did. Ramen is tasty. I did one semester of German. Ramen is tasty. And. Uh, two semesters of French in high school, and then I did three three semesters of uh, French in college, and I don't really know any of it. So I can count to four. This. Ramen, ramen. Tasty. Where does she go screaming again? This is a new. No, it's not screaming. It's. I mean, it sounds probably better from my end. Oh yeah, bro. Uh, kore sushi. Oh no, kore wa sushi des. Oishi ramen. Oishi ramen. All right, so <laughs> can we wrap up the show, Jeff, so you can get back to learning your Japanese? Japanese, yeah, he even got into it now. Curry. Curry is face. Uh, anyways, sorry. Anyways, I guess that's it. Huh? Well, it was it was good seeing and talking to you, uh, you guys. I always <laughs> usually try to catch the the broadcast occasionally, live. but this this was fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Bobby, and that you get a chance to join us. Just a little social hangout. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So Damon's out of town or something. That's why he's not here. Damon. Uh -oh. I don't know where he is right this very minute. It is a six thirty on the East Coast. He actually, well, by now he and Jim should be in Las Vegas. Oh, that's right. They're doing the honeymoon. That's right. Yes. That's right. Today was the first start of their honeymoon. Uh, they're in Las Vegas for a he, couple of days. He decided to go on honeymoon and says, "Celebrate my birthday." Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, they'll be there Las Vegas for a couple of days, and then they're going to, I think, Puerto Vallarta. So yeah. Yeah, yeah he's true. gonna be uh, out of town for over a week. So yeah, they're so we're. I'm, I mean, I'm pleased for them that they're going and getting their their honeymoon officially Finally. done, even though it's a uh, 14 months after they got married. But you know, hey. no time like the present. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Very good. All right, guys. Thanks again. Thanks, Bobby. I'll see you, Bobby. I'll see you guys on the. <laughs> On the podcast. Okay. All righty. Take care. Have a good holiday, too. You guys. Paisman. So that makes me think of something. I have a funny feeling. So Monday for Payson and Lloyd is just a normal day, right? Yep. <laughs> I, I, It's not. A, so I have to work because with my job, I can't take days off. 
uh, that are not like I'm scheduled so is covering for me. It is a holiday in Canada, uh, but I'm just working. What's the holiday for Canada? Now I'm intrigued. Labor, Labor Day. Okay, so you do Labor Day as well. Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah. Unlike Thanksgiving, we do it on the same day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, our Thanksgiving is in October, uh, which is a reasonable time. It's not like right next to Christmas, you know. Mm -hmm. When there's an American Thanksgiving, it's usually like, oh, yes, the snow has come and stayed. Thanks. Uh, so <laughs> nice. That's fair. Very much so. All right. So I, we're going to get ready to wrap up here. Uh, I'm going to try to go through the usual spiel, save the birthday boy. Give him a break for a moment. If you're interested in uh, checking out more about us as a podcast, you can go to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can also shoot us an email. You can wish Jeff a happy birthday. You could even send him perhaps a picture or a layout of pictures that he may find of interest for his birthday. And you could do that at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to leave us a voicemail, uh, sexy or otherwise, we haven't said that in a long time, uh, you can call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can also check us out on the social media outlets, uh, you know, the main ones. <laughs> We're not going to go through listing all of them. We're also on YouTube uh, online as well, where you'll get to see this uh, video, obviously, there as well. It's uh, youtube.com slash at Cubs Out Loud. If you want to join our Telegram, which is a platform where we have a little chat group, you can go to bit.ly slash Telegram hyphen COL. If you want to know when we're going to be live for events, you can go to our Google Calendar um, that's public. That's bit.ly slash calendar dash COL. If you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. You can get merch. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and pick up some nice things. You could have a belly rubbing specialist shirt like Jeff is wearing and proudly showing off as the birthday boy, one of our newer designs, thanks to Smashy. You could get one of these crazy shirts that we came up with that says, whatever the blank says these days. And this is my new proud baby blue shirt that says, whatever the queens say these days that I'm probably going to be repping on COLDR. Um, we have a whole line of these things that are going to be... Uh, available there let me think about it we got what bears boys we got b-o-y-s and b-o-i-s i think we did uh well we did cubs cubs we did pups daddies? did we do daddies i thought i thought damon said we didn't and i feel like I, we're gonna have to fix that um what's so sad because now i gotta go look it up which is <laughs> i should know better because we, we put them all together and like posted them on there and actually they're having a whole like series of sales right now um let me go here whatever the it says whatever the dot 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 says so we've got bears boys boys queens pups gays pets we do have daddies see i'm not crazy and sure well, I, I was the one who said it i know but i thought damon said that we didn't do daddies Queen, pups, pets, gays, daddies, cubs, boys, boys, and bears. I'm so amused by the fact that, uh, of course, we do daddies. Like, come on. I mean, it's us. Damon's married to one. <laughs> so true. So true. So, uh, but there's plenty of merch items that are available over there. And you could also go uh, support Smashy who um, has helped make some of our designs for us. You can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Mashy the Bear. Um, you can also become a patron like uh, some of the lovely people uh, over the years, including Lloyd, who happens to be present, is one of our patrons on the Patreon. Uh, so uh, we'll be sending some gifts out soon to folks. Uh, I'm going to start having to harass the patrons <clears throat> to make sure that we have their accurate shipping address. Uh, to send them things and then uh if you don't want to be a patron which is fine you can also just make a one-time financial donation you can go to paypal.me slash cubs out loud uh and make a financial donation to allow us to as we say keep the lights on around here also um, we did use some of the money that uh, we've gotten uh to help buy jeff's new uh microphone setup so he has a, a better arrangement which to be fair let's jeff how old was the old microphone 
it was literally over a decade. I got that before the first podcast. Yeah. So it was it was time for an upgrade. Um, yeah. So we thank our patrons for making uh, that possible. If you want to help promote uh, Cups Out Loud, you can basically uh, promote the podcast anywhere that you listen to us. On any of the platforms, you can give us a thumbs up, a like, a comment, a five star, all the hearts, you name it. Uh, Jeff, if people would like to get in touch with you, where would they find you on the interwebs? Before I get to that, I do okay. want to say, because Lloyd is here, yes, Sazzle does have international versions of their sites. So, mm -hmm. for example, for the UK, you can go to zazzle.co.uk and you'll be able to get shipping based off of and pricing based off of uh, the UK rate. So you can't, if you're not in the country of the United States, for example, Payson's in, in Canada, so Zazzle.ca, same thing, same merch, same everything, but with the local pricing and shipping. So you do have those options. But for me, if you want to find me anywhere on the internet, you can find me as Box, Cub Box, Stack Box, Puppy Box. Cubby bucks, something or other. I would say Damon, but he's not here. Gary. Uh, if you would like to find me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, take it out of your